Hi, my name is Charlie, owner and founder of O-Town Compost, Orlando's Community Composter. I'm here to describe uh, my perspective on composting and how someone at their home can compost in their backyard. First, I want to talk about why composting is important. And this is a bit of a controversial statement, but I personally believe that composting is more important for the environment and ecosystems than basic standard recycling. I say this as someone who spent close to four years in the solid waste and recycling industry. And it really starts looking at the United States' infrastructure, how we handle solid waste. Right now, the majority of our waste is either going to the landfill or incinerator, where it produces uh, methane, which is at least 25 times more potent, potent to spur climate change than CO2, regular carbon, carbon dioxide. Basically, composting removes green, important greenhouse gases by diverting organic material from the landfill and it also provides um, organic matter to our soil food web, to the topsoil, which has been depleted since um, people landed on North America and began aggressively farming. Also, it's important to note that in the recycling industry, um, it, it does create millions of dollars of revenue and you know, thousands of jobs, uh, which is great for the, the environment, like the social environments, but it, it doesn't quite offer those same environmental mental benefits in water, waste, and energy usage. Imagine a uh, tomato grown in the Valley of California has to get trucked all the way to Florida, go through distribution and processing, to be cleaned and it eventually goes home to your fridge where it might be forgotten in the back of your refrigerator and just wasted. Uh, that's compared to a lot of the things which we recycle today, such as the glass bottle, which doesn't have any commodity market value and may be shipped all the way to the port of Los Angeles uh, where it will then go on to an Asian country to be remanufactured. I start with the soil food web when I talk about composting. Uh, those microbes that are microscopic and that make up the majority of what's in our soil or our compost. Um, you know, billions of years ago, Earth was nothing but a fiery ball. And eventually over time, um, microbes began feeding on carbons and creating life and excrement and death, uh, created a, a topsoil of nutrient rich soil. And that's what, you know, we, we eat from, our, our animals uh, graze from. It, it really is a, a great component of um, what we include in our, our, our value system. Um, also, if you have shopped at the grocery store and bought a carrot and versus growing one in your own backyard, you know there is a huge difference between the taste of the, the food grown in your garden versus bought at the store. And a lot of that has to do with uh, when you're buying a vegetable in the grocery store, it's already sat in refrigeration for two plus weeks. Um, it, it's at the very end of its life, whereas in your garden, you pick it that day and you may eat it for dinner the same day. And, you know, I'm part of the millennial generation. We're firmly, we're interested in really being self-sufficient and making our lives more sustainable in the sense stepping out of the day-to-day -day grind, the rat race, and by growing and providing your own food, that is the key component to really being self-sufficient. I'll talk about commercial scale composting because um, 
O-Town Compost, we're up to roughly, you know, a thousand pounds a week, which is more than someone who has a backyard composter might um, be processing at any time. But really you need to start with your carbon, your browns versus your nitrogen, your greens in a three to or two to one ratio between the two make the perfect mix. Uh, and also they provide the per perfect moisture content. And um, it's important if you have a backyard compost pile to be turning your compost or some kind of um, aeration into the compost. And that provides uh, that oxygen which the microbes in composting thrive on. Also, uh, there is a big potential for manure management, composting in the form of manure management. Um, Florida is known for their horse stables and a lot of that manure is either being spread raw onto pastures or it is being filled Stable owners are filling up large dumpsters and taking it to the landfill. O-Town Compost looks at an alternative method where we use a aerated static pile composting system and turn that manure into black gold for gardening or for the community. Um, you know, when you get to the level of commercial scale composting, you start to be cognizant of contamination and the commercial waste stream, restaurants, hospitals, cafes, is a lot more contaminated than the residential waste stream, which is just single family and multifamily homes. So right now, O-Town Compost is mostly focused on the residential side of things, but hopes to build those programs and customize those programs to really make sure that composting doesn't go down the same path as recycling has gone down with high contaminants. So I had the opportunity to tour this commercial composting facility and they use an aerated static pile system and mix it food waste with the yard waste and they're able to divert you know thousands of tons a year. For you backyard composters, I just want to give my review and opinion on the different styles of backyard composting. Um, tumblers are quite a popular method, uh, pretty trendy, I would say, and they're really they're, tumblers are really batch composters. You're, you add a large batch of food waste in your browns and you tumble it and you let it sit for you know four weeks, I think most of them say, but you're not making constant additions to your tumbler. Um, which is what, you know, for example, I need, but um, they work, they work oftentimes great, but you just have to be aware that they're batch style composters. Um, the city of Orlando provides its residents with these earth machines, these black plastic bins. And, you know, I have one at my, ho my house. Um, and they don't work great because they don't add a lot of aeration. They're pretty much black shells and they're impossible to turn to get your shovel or pitchfork down there and actually turn so you're aerating from top to bottom. And lastly, they dry out very easily. Um, in the drier months, you need to be aware to take your hose and water it pretty frequently. And you're gonna have to use a lot of water because that water needs to soak through the pile. Um, this is a picture of how I started uh, using just pallets screwed together to create composting bays. And I would use a pitch fork to turn the compost piles. And yeah, it, it did the trick. Of course, it wasn't um, an even distribution and the temperatures didn't always get to that 130 to 150, but it, it in the center of the compost piles, it was nice and hot and did the trick. This is a style I would suggest for someone who's actually generating, you know, a big family or someone generating a lot of compost. Composting trenches is literally where you dig holes in your garden. You put the food waste and then bury it. Um, it has the negative where it, it does suppress the oxygen and 
It's an anaerobic style of composting, so it releases methane into the ozone, but it also works great and you're bound to get volunteer sprouts. And yeah, anaerobic composting, you know, it's uh, op opposed to aerobic composting. It's where you um, shut off any flow of oxygen to your compost pile. You may tarp your compost pile and it, it works just great. It will create that black crumbly compost, but at the same time, you have to be cognizant of releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. A lot of the reason people don't delve into composting in their backyard or for any reason at all, they, there's a yuck factor to composting that stems around odors and pests. And um, anaerobic composting will definitely produce odors. Um, that's why I prefer aerobic composting because when you shut off the oxygen to your compost pile, um, microbes form that release that that really stinky odor. And it's like if you put food waste in a five gallon bucket, shut the lid tight and you open it up a week later, it's gonna be pretty stinky because there's no oxygen available. Um, also, there's people are concerned about ants in their composting pile or flies. And ants usually occur when your pile dries out. Um, basically, if your pile is how it's supposed to be with the right moisture, air, and um, brown and green mix, you're not gonna have a problem with odors or pests, but these are the diagnosis of when your pile is not working right. And there are these uh, flies that look like black hornets called black soldier flies. They will lay eggs and the larva, black soldier fly larva will uh, voracious eaters of food waste, but they are not to be, you shouldn't be concerned with them. They don't even have mouths and they're really just great food waste recyclers themselves. And if you're, you're able to, um, you know, aggregate them, harvest them, and feed them to your neighbor's chickens. Um, and I would say to the city of Orlando or Orange County that uh, food waste diversion programs are a really great way to clean up your, your garbage stream. Um, you're removing all that organic material that creates the yucky, heavy mess in your dumpster and if you're able to separate and remove the food waste, all that's left are your uh, aggregates, your, your glass, your plastic and paper, just dry stuff. So if you're a business and you're looking to save money on collection disposal fees, um, separating the food waste would definitely get you there. Another great way of food waste recycling is vermicomposting, uh, building a worm bin, because worms will eat their body weight in a day. So one pound of worms will chow through a, a pound of food waste. And also they produce a nutrient rich fertilizer, the worm castings or their excrement, which is ideal for any garden. Uh, setting up a bin is as simple as getting like a plastic tub, adding some kind of bedding, uh, some, some water to get the, pile, the bedding nice and moist. Then you add your food waste and your worms and just put them in a shady spot and they will do their work. Uh, they don't like sunlight and they're prone to heat, but as long as you get the Florida Red Wigglers, they're the best equipped to handle Florida's hot summers. So a little bit about O-Town Compost. Um, we're Orlando's community composter. We're mission driven to not only divert food waste from the landfill, but support the local food system, which is why we partner with Fleet Farming and other community gardens in town. Um, we also really are aware of social justice and uh, we wanna grow a movement in the city of Orlando centered around you know, doing the right thing for the environment and for humanity. So um, we have a, cur currently we have a residential food scrap collection service where we give people a five gallon bucket, a compostable liner and a lid. They fill it up with their food scraps. 
we come pick it up every week or every other week and swap it out with a new bin. So it's valet style and we compost it back at our composting site and return it to our subscribers uh, twice a year. Um, we do zero waste to wet uh, events. We have a wedding coming up in July where we will reduce the food waste at weddings to zero. And we even um, provide compostable serviceware to make sure that the whole event is as low footprint as possible. And we have a couple office clients um, where we're diverting coffee grounds and other food waste that's generated at, at offices. It's a great way for your, your business or corporation to practice what they preach, to align themselves with their mission. And lastly, we are trying to bring an alternative manure management method to the mainstream in Orange County in manure management, where we're actually composting the horse manure into a valuable commodity rather than taking it to the landfill or just letting raw manure, um, you know, not do much when it's spread on the pastures. As I said earlier, we're using aerated static pile method, the ASP method. Um, it's literally where you have PVC pipe going under the pile and you have a blower that's blowing air throughout the pile. This uh, providing oxygen to the compost pile is what speeds up the decomposition and really comes up with a beautiful finished black gold product. There is no odors and no need of turning. Um, it's static, so basically it just sits there and after 60 days, it's finished. Uh, thank you for having me and I hope you learned uh, a lot about composting and food waste recycling.